Hello, and welcome to the video tutorial on the List Hollow batch processing software. My name is Thomas Liu. In this video, we will be covering the features of Sequoia Scientific's hologram processing software. This software is called Hollow Batch, and it is the companion software to Sequoia's List Hollow instrument. The software allows List Hollow users to extract particle characteristics from a batch of holograms. We will first walk you through installation of the software, then we will explore all the features of Hollow Batch. To install the software, you will need to download the installation package from Sequoia's website or locate the package on the CD that was shipped with your List Hollow instrument. Select the appropriate software package based on your operating system. The package should consist of the MATLAB compiler runtime installer, a folder named Hollow Batch, and a folder named Hollow Detail. An overview of the Hollow Detail application is covered in a separate tutorial. The Hollow Batch and Hollow Detail applications are made up of compiled MATLAB code. Therefore, a program to interpret this code must be installed before these applications can be run on your computer. The required software is called MATLAB Compiler Runtime, or MCR, and is included in the software package. Double click on the MCR icon to install it. A security warning may appear. If so, select the Run button. The files will then be extracted and prepared for installation. Once the files are extracted, follow the on-screen instructions to install the MCR. Once that is finished, you should be able to open Hollow Batch as a standalone application. Also, note that the installation of the MCR can take a significant amount of time, much longer than what is shown in this video tutorial. Next, go into the Hollow Batch folder and open the hollowbatch.exe file. Once the software is open, a list of processing options will be displayed. At the top of the window are the reconstruction parameters. These are the settings that you can use to customize how holograms are reconstructed. The default settings will work for most situations and should not be changed without a full understanding of the variables being adjusted. However, should you want to customize the reconstruction parameters, you can go to Options and select Unlock Reconstruction Parameters. Now the reconstruction parameters are available to be edited. The min depth is how many millimeters away from the CCD window the software should start reconstructing slices. The max depth is how many millimeters away from the CCD window the software should stop reconstructing slices. The distance between the two windows on the list hollow is 50 millimeters. Therefore, the values of 0 and 50 should be used for the min and max depth, respectively. The step size defines the distance between reconstruction slices. A smaller step size will improve focusing of small particles, but will dramatically increase processing time. Next, you can change the position of the region of interest, or ROI, by selecting this button. The ROI is the portion of the hologram that will be reconstructed in the software. When the Change ROI tab is opened, the default ROI layout is shown in the screen. The default is two overlapping 1024 by 1024 ROIs. You can change the size of these ROIs by using the radio button in the top right. You can also click and hold to move a ROI to a new location inside the hologram. You may add up to four ROIs at a time. Lastly, the image size should not be adjusted unless the holograms have been cropped from their original size. The default image size of 1600 by 1200 corresponds to the size of holograms created by the list hollow. I will use the default ROI layout for this example. Once you are finished editing the ROIs, you can click OK to save the changes. Parameters in the Advanced tab should only be adjusted by advanced users, or after consultation with Sequoia Scientific. See the user's manual for a description of the variables listed in the Advanced tab. It's unlikely that a user will be frequently editing the reconstruction parameters. Therefore, most users will skip the reconstruction parameters and start by selecting Output Options. There are a series of six checkboxes that allows the user to customize the type of data generated by Hollow Batch. The only file generated by default is the volume size distribution. That is, 
If none of these checkboxes are selected, the volume size distribution for each hologram will still be generated and saved to a CSV file. The other outputs are optional because each selected output will increase the processing time and potentially use a large amount of disk space on your computer. So let's take a look at the output options in more detail. The first option is to save reconstructed slices. If this is checked, every reconstructed slice will be saved as a TIFF image to your computer. For the default reconstruction parameters, that would be 101 images per hologram because you are reconstructing a sample volume of 50 millimeters at increments of a half a millimeter. Most users will have no use for the reconstructed images. Therefore, this option should not be selected unless there is a specific need for the reconstructed images. The next option is to save depth mon images. This stands for depth and montage images. These are composite images that will display all the in-focus particles found in a hologram. In the montage image, each in-focus particle is cut out from its reconstructed plane and they are all collapsed onto a single two-dimensional image, like the one shown here. One of these images will be generated for every hologram that is processed. The second image is the depth image. It is similar to the montage image, however the particles have been color-coded by their location in the sample volume. In this example, the red particles are located close to the CCD window, and blue particles are located close to the laser window. Again, one of these will be created for each hologram if the checkbox is selected. The following two checkboxes are used to output a .mat or .csv file of particle statistics. One file will be generated for each hologram and will have information about each particle found in the hologram. See the user's manual for a list and description of the particle statistics found in these files. Next is an option to save the generated background. Hollow batch allows you to specify single or multiple holograms that can be subtracted from all the other processed holograms. This is generally good practice when processing holograms as it will help to reduce noise in the reconstructed images and can help remove the effects of particles or following organisms that may be stuck to the windows. We will talk a bit more about background subtraction later in the video. For now, just know that this checkbox will save the background image that was subtracted from all other holograms. Lastly, there is a checkbox for showing data visualization. This option will provide you with updated plots of the particle size distribution, number of particles per hologram, temperature, and depth. These are updated in real time during processing. Therefore, this is the fastest way to visualize your data. If this option is not selected, a text box will be displayed instead. The text box will provide periodic updates to inform you what hologram is currently being processed by the software. Because this is a tutorial showing the features of the software, I will turn on all the output options. After deciding on output options, you now need to select the size bins you would like the software to use when exporting the size distribution. There are four options, which have been chosen to allow easy integration and comparison with the List 100X size distributions. See the List Hollow manual for a list of the size bin options in Microns. The next group of settings are the performance options. Note that this setting is only available in the 64-bit version of Hollow Batch. If you are running the 32-bit version, you will not see this option displayed in the software. The default setting is minus speed minus memory, meaning the program will use less memory, however it will take longer to process the holograms. This setting is recommended for running Hollow Batch on laptops or on computers where Hollow Batch is not the only program running. The plus speed plus memory option will process holograms faster, however it will consume a large amount of memory. This option should only be used on computers that have at least 6 gigabytes of RAM, and it should not be used for step sizes smaller than 0.5 millimeters. When you select this option, a dialog box will remind you of the requirements needed to run this option. I will select the plus memory plus speed option because I am running hollow batch on a desktop computer with 8 gigabytes of RAM and I am using a reconstruction step size of 0.5 millimeters. 
Now that you have chosen all of your settings, you now have the option to save your selections for the next time you open Holobatch. By selecting Options and going to Save Settings on Exit, all of the selections you have made will be saved for the next time you open Holobatch. Should you need to revert back to the default settings, you can go to Options, Restore Factory Defaults. Now you must specify the directory where your holograms are located and where you would like Holobatch to place output files. First you select Raw Holograms and navigate to the folder where the holograms you would like to process are located. Here I will select some holograms that were collected by a list holo at a moored location. Next, select the folder you would like the reconstructed images to be saved in. I will save these in my reconstruction folder. Files will only be saved here if you have chosen to save reconstructed slices and or chosen to save depmon images. Next, specify where you would like to save the size distribution CSV file. I will save size files to my size folder. Now that the paths are chosen, you can also select to process only a subset of holograms in that directory. By pressing Select Holograms to Process, the directory you specified for the raw holograms will now open. Now you can select which holograms you would like to process. If you would like to have all of the holograms in the directory processed, you can simply ignore this button. I will process all of the holograms in the directory. Next, you can select background files that will be subtracted from each processed hologram. As mentioned earlier, this is good practice when processing holograms as it will reduce noise and help to remove artifacts in the holograms, such as particles stuck to the instrument windows. You have two options when it comes to choosing background files. The first option is to select a single hologram that was collected in particle-free water. This is analogous to the Zscat collected using a List100X. Or you may select multiple holograms and the software will average all of them together and then use the averaged image as the background. You could select multiple Zscat holograms, or you may even select particle containing holograms to create an average background. If the particles are moving quickly and rarely appear in the same place in sequential holograms, then the average of all the holograms will provide a good estimation of the contribution from the background. Let's look at an example. Let's say that the holograms being shown on the screen are the ones we'd like to process. They contain moving particles, as well as artifacts attached to the near window and the far window. If we average all of these holograms together, the diffraction pattern from the moving particles disappears. However, the artifacts remain in the averaged image. This provides an ideal background image to subtract from our holograms during processing. It will remove the background and the artifacts from our holograms, giving us a better estimation of the particle size distribution. Multiple or single background files can be selected by pressing the Select Background Files button. I will select all of the holograms I am processing in order to make an average background image. Now we are ready to process the holograms. Press the Process button. One of two screens will appear depending on if you have selected to show data visualization. This example is with data visualization selected. If this is not selected, only the text box in the lower left will be displayed. Now press the Go button to start processing. Processing can be aborted at any time by pressing the Cancel button. It may take a few moments for the processing to exit after pressing the Cancel button. If processing is not canceled, it will continue until all holograms are processed. When processing is finished, you will see the word END displayed in the text box. You can now exit out of the software and view your output files in the directories you specified earlier. Should you have any other questions about Holobatch, please refer to the List Holo User's Manual or contact Sequoia Scientific directly. Thank you for watching.